When the meteor wiped out the dinosaurs, rock turned to vapour and burning glass rained down from the sky. Out here, the revolution is a story told in disintegration. She still eats with her son's baby cutlery. My grandmother used to make wine in her bathtub. I met a white man who married a famous Iranian poet who lived in Iran before the war, his cream linen suit like a joke. The imperialists have all the fun and they get to go home afterwards. With still wet feet, we lay the jhana Mars horizontal, wide enough to hold us both. Shoulder to shoulder, we are two sundered suns, kneeling into the horizon's holy mouth. Don't fidget. Don't forget to say thank you. Don't forget you're very lucky. Don't watch too much telly. Don't trust no one. Don't pick your nose, your eyes will fall out. Don't leave marks on the window. Don't wear an oversized t-shirt or leave blood in the bin. Don't moan, don't nag, don't be mutton dressed as lamb. Don't show you're bothered. Don't have a short, short skirt. Don't cry. Don't forget to clean the edges of the oven. Don't forget the mould. The taxi sped through potholes on our way to the barnyard in St. Elizabeth. Grandma clutched her blue Bible, a soft prayer on her breath. The bush doctor threw a handful of beads and bones on the table, pointed at the John Crow bead near the edge, said it was a sign of distances I would travel. Far from Palmer's Hill, a flame no calabash can contain, uncontainable like the bird after whom the bead is named. Instead you say karna parta hai, one has to, shouldering necessity or whatever it is your mother and her mother always made up for themselves. Because what perplexes hair more than a woman who claims her life as her own? To this the porters never say much. Maybe they too have daughters whom they send off each daybreak into the dank, panting jaws of a public bus. Maybe they too admit to necessity, but never the way it may mother invention 